this year is the 60th uh, anniversary, a uh, very important report by William Beveridge, Voluntary Action. Uh, and even though it was written in the shadow of the Second World War, uh, his central argument, I think, is still relevant today. Uh, let me just quote a little bit from it. In a totalitarian society, all action outside the citizen's home, uh, and it may be much on that goes on there, is directed or controlled by the state. By contrast, vigor and abundance of voluntary action outside one's home, individually and in association with other citizens, for bettering one's own life and that of one's fellows, are the distinguishing marks of a free society. They have been the outstanding features uh, of British life. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I think volunteering, uh, in the words of Julian Neuberger, should be part of the DNA of our society. I think Beveridge had it right 60 years ago when he said uh, that it had and it characterised uh, a free society. Uh, if I could just uh, point to a number of issues in which, uh, within the consensus that we, uh, I think Phil rightly points out, have across the parties. Uh, the first is to really recognise that, of course, no government of whatever party uh, is going to have all the answers and should uh, be able to drive transformations uh, completely in volunteering. By its nature, volunteering, the decision to volunteer, is a voluntary decision. Uh, and what I think we should be trying to do uh, in this room and beyond is to try to establish a real social norm of volunteering so that it's uh, the standard thing for everyone to do. Uh, and whether that's in the workplace, uh, whether it's employers, making available opportunities for staff to volunteer and volunteer regularly. Uh, I think the more that we can do to establish that as a widespread social norm, uh, the better. And it's concerning that at a time when more people uh, have volunteered, have participated in volunteering, the number of hours that people are volunteering uh, is in decline. Uh, and so what one sees is, a, uh, is an increase in volunteering over, over the years, but actually a shrinkage in regular volunteering, and often it's that regular commitment uh, of volunteering hours uh, that are essential if you're to sustain uh, some of the services uh, going forward. And the second thing that I think we need to be concerned about uh, is the decline in grant funding relative to contracts, uh, because I know from my experience uh, as a councillor, as a member, that often the groups that formerly were funded through grants tend to be those that use volunteers or make use of volunteers more. And so the threat to grant funding uh, at every level of government, I think, is a threat to volunteering. Uh, and we ought to uh, be very careful about going too far down that road. Now, increased contracting uh, of services that were previously carried out by the state uh, to be carried out by third sector organisations is something that, again, is a point of consensus uh, across the parties. But I think we need to look at how those contracts are specified. Uh, and all too often, there is such minute micromanagement uh, of the contracts that particularly disadvantage volunteers. Because if there's one thing that we know about managing volunteers, uh, that it is uh, more diverse, uh, it doesn't fall neatly into, uh, into the categories that are uh, easily to capture uh, in very tight contracts. And so I think we need to have more uh, concern as, as to the over-implementation uh, of the micromanagement uh, of contracts there. And I think Phil mentioned uh, some concerns about the compact. I think the compact needs to be strengthened uh, to provide uh, better protection there. Uh, and the final point I'd like to make is when government does uh, get involved, uh, and when it does uh, provide funding uh, in particular, I think it's important that the sector, uh, particularly in volunteering, is well funded. Too often I sense a tendency to have what someone in the sector described to me as a logo, a launch, and a lunch. But this is what happens, you get something brand new, new logo designed, a new initiative, a new quango, a new body. Uh, that gets the funding, you get a fancy glitzy launch, uh, and then that joins the, uh, the array of organisations that are already there. My default position is that there is enough expertise uh, and experience amongst the organisations in this room uh, that when you're thinking of new initiatives uh, to engage in volunteering or any other aspect of the third sector, Rather than go for the, uh, the glitzy vanity project, something brand new, have the humility to go to uh, the existing organisations to see if the money that's being spent can't be spent more immediately and more effectively by trusting people who have some experience there.